Hello, it is that time again. It's the season preview. We are heading into our final season at Goodison Park, Jack. Finished with four, well, won 48 points last season. We, we had they taken off us, but we won 48 points last season. So going into this season, there's obviously Amadou Onana's gone out the door, Andre Gomez, people like that. Dan Juma's gone back. Uh, Lewis Dobbins moved off to Villa. Evan have brought in Timmy De Boone and Illiman and I. Jack Harrison's back on loan. We've got uh, Jesper Lindstrom in, and obviously we've got um, Ashley Young has re-signed for us. Want to look at it like that? And Jake O'Brien, of course, as well, has come in from Lyon. I feel personally we're still a little bit short, and I'm hoping with a couple of weeks left, Everton can do something in the window. But how are you feeling ahead of the new season? What, like, what are, in your head, like, what are your what are your targets? You think for Everton Football Club for this season? In terms of targets, I'd want us to be where we should have been last year without okay. our points taken off. Okay. That means again, of course, hoping the finances aren't in as big a mess as they were mm. last year. Obviously, we know it's not ideal with the ownership situation, and it's not really in control of the players or the manager. Mm. So you're putting faith in people you're not really as familiar with to have that sort of doubt, but. In terms of on the pitch, I want just a solid, no issues, no scares, mid-table season. You want to be that bit more ambitious and say, oh, come on, like let's get into the top half, you know, with Everton and it's mm. our last season at Goodison. Let's, you know, like get some good results, not just tread water. It's a competitive mid-table this year when you look at what some of the teams have been spending and the teams making ambitious moves, moves that we can't make. You know, teams like Bournemouth, no disrespect to them, but teams of a much lower standing than Everton are throwing around 30, 40 million at striker targets. We aren't in a position to do that. Mm. But I like what we have brought in. I like all the signings we've made. You know, Lindstrom is obviously on loan and we don't know how much the manager favours him because he's not necessarily a Sean Dice type of player. And there is the worry that is it another Dan Juma situation. Mm. But he looks exciting. Mm. He looks like he's got ability and he didn't have the best year at Napoli. But before that, he was very highly thought of. Mm. And we've seen him pre-season. He shows moments of excitement. Mm. And Dai is another one of very big on him at Sheffield United as a younger player he's he got a bit of skill he's dangerous he can gives us an advance on a position we've already got in our team he's just yeah. a more advanced attack and dynamic of that in its core role the O'Brien transfer just made a lot of sense and it's one for the future same with uh, Tim Oric Boonham as well mm. although you know he has been very impressive in pre-season so he might get more football than we were anticipating yeah. and Harrison we know and trust him and the manager likes him and he can play both flanks as well so I do quite like all the business that we've done. You hope for more, but it is what it is. I would have liked to have had a couple more in for the Brighton game, but you've got to work with what you've got, and hopefully the manager's willing to work with these players because there's some exciting ones in there, and I do think if you get the most out of these players, these are players who, for the most part, at one point or another, especially Lindstrom and Endai in particular, were touted for very big things because they show an ability of that level. So... Let's try and get that out of them. Let's commit to them. Let's get them in the team and let them lay in the system. And they can learn to do the things that Sean Dyche wants from players in those positions. I mean, you're right. We got, you know, 48 points last season. I keep going on about it, but we went four months without a win. We uh, we lost the open of four home games, which is obviously not, never ideal, is it? Um, and yet we still finished 14 points ahead of the relegation zone with those eight points taken off. Without the eight points taken off, we were what? Four points behind West Ham in ninth, uh, one point worse than Crystal Palace. You know we had the same points as the likes of Brighton, who had lofty ambitions earlier on. So the manager was able near the end of the season to craft that home form, get that right. We won five home games on the run at the end of the season to to finish where we did. One thing I don't think we we can't have a similar start at Goodison no. as we had last season. It was dreadful, and then we had that period of you know we'd won three games at home in December and we didn't win another home game till April and yet had we been able to be okay in that four months when we didn't win a game of footy we would have finished in the top half in a season when most of us were, were obviously petrified yeah, over um, points deductions and all that and we don't play the most attack on football we know that and maybe the manager with bringing in the likes of Indy with bringing in Lindstrom can can do a little bit of a crossover and sort of merge that defensive stability with a little bit more flair. Everton underperformed 
their XG, whether you like XG or you don't, Everton underperformed their XG by 21 goals last season. It was the worst performance. Um, and therefore, if we could even improve that by 50% of an underimprovement, it, sorry, underperformance, then we'd be in a much better place. Because Everton were the second, the second lowest goal scorers in the Premier League. The only worse by Sheffield United, who went down. Yes, conversely, we were the fourth best defensive team. And so if we if we went to the sixth best defensive team and became the eighth worst in the league, then we might have had the opportunity to win a hell of a lot more points this season. And is that something you're looking for? More goals from this team this season? Yeah, it's the biggest thing this team can improve on, isn't mm. it? I think under this manager, things are always going to be a certain way. Not conceding is always going to be the focus. Not having a, so having a lot of the ball is never going to be a massive priority. Mm. Having the ball for the sake of it, for example. He's not one of those managers. And that's fine. He lends his style to a more defensively sound, safer, for lack of a better term, style. And that's completely fine because I think we benefited from that in a lot of ways last year. But it's fine on a balance, isn't it? Like you said, maybe we aren't the fourth best defence anymore and we're the sixth best. Mm. But in terms of goal scored, we climb the ranks a lot more. Mm. I think tactical balance is a very fine thing. There's no doubt in my mind that this manager knows ways he could improve this team's attack and output. But it's doing it in ways that doesn't jeopardise what he knows and what he's worked to try and perfect over his career, which is the defensive side of things. And that's the difficulty. The very obvious and very small tweaks that could have been made to that team last year that would have gave them a lot more going forward but it would have been potentially at the expense of making us a lot worse defensively so it's finding that balance that you mentioned isn't it and that'll come in some small changes and in some big ones but we can't lose what we've got at the back because I think a lot of our most talented players play at that area of the pitch. You know, Jordan Pickford, not many teams who have, you know, spent some time battling relegation can say they've got a keeper as good as Jordan Pickford. Mm -hmm. Bramthwaite and Tarkowski, they speak for themselves. And Michalenko had a really good season mm -hmm. as well. And you want to make sure... We've done a lot to keep Bramthwaite this year as well. We could have sold him and bought some attack and talent, but mm -hmm. we have made the choice to keep him. So that shouldn't go to waste. We shouldn't become a team that you know flies up the pitch and doesn't care about conceding and try and win every game five four. Because that would be a waste. But what be we should no. what be exciting though. No. Yeah, <laughs> for the time I think yeah. you know exciting and stressful mm. often go hand oh, in yeah. hand. But um, but then one nil and stressful is it goes hand in hand with Everton. True, true. It, it's about balance though yeah. for me. You've got to be realistic. You've got to know what this manager is going to stick to first mm. and foremost. But it's what can we add without taking away. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. Um, just going through the defence there, as you were, would you say then right back is a, is a right back's a problem? Because I always, when we speak to people on the show and when we're doing live shows, people always bang on about a right back. We need a right back, and everyone seems to ignore the fact we've got one left back, which I always it blows my mind for the simple reason that at right back, and people might go, "Yep, yeah, but we haven't got a good one." You know, we've got Ashley Young, Seamus Coleman, Nathan Patterson, James Garner, Roman Dixon, now was a promising young kid. So there's there's five lads who can play at right back. And we've only really got Ashley Young who covers at left back. Um Who but, is the cover at right back? And as he's well. the cover at right back and he's forty. That he'll be forty within this Premier League season, which isn't ideal anyway. But where are you on sort of like Nathan Patterson? <sighs> It, it, it is an interesting one, the entire right-back situation, and it's something we spoke about in the aftermath of last season, where in terms of quality, you do need one, but in terms of bodies, we've got a lot of players who can play that position. James Garner, of course. Yeah. Go there. And um, it's, do you take the hit? Do you, you know, spend what precious money you have on a right-back that you don't necessarily need, but you want because it's an improvement you can make? Mm. Or do you spend that on a left back who it might not necessarily play because we've already got a good one? Yeah, yeah. And then if we have two good left backs, we're going to have, you know, one sat on the bench without a good right back on the pitch. And it, it, those are the difficult choices you make when you are a little bit cash strapped. In terms of Patterson, I'd really like him to do well for us because it, we brought him in at a young age and mm. he came in. He hadn't really played that much senior no. football at Rangers. He played a handful of games, some of them at left back mm. as yeah. well because you know their, their captain at the time was their right back. Mm. So he went making that place his own. And he's obviously been through a tough time at Everton with his injuries as well and then obviously not always being favoured by the manager. 
it looks like he's taking the time to bulk up over the summer in the mm-hmm. hopes that you know a bit more athletic presence will give him an advantage and give him something to add to his game. But I think while there is there's promise there and there is a potential upside to Patterson, I'd be lying if I said I was convinced because mm-hmm. he hasn't shown it all that often for me. He's had games, don't get me wrong, he's had good games. and he, mm-hmm. He's put together little three-game spells where he's done well, but either poor form or injuries yeah. have broken that up. and. Yeah. You can be optimistic about Patterson, but I find it hard to be convinced. Mm. I'd have no issue with, you know, giving him the reins and saying, go for it, it's yours. Mm. And, you know, if you can keep fit, but it's your last chance. I was going to say, how do we, how, like, how do we get to that stage? Because it is for me that, it's almost for me saying, you've got 10 games, lad. And if you perform, it's yours, you know? Because it's just, you're absolutely right when he started to look like he's got it. And you're going, yeah, he looks good now, he's settled in. The next week he's, he's dropped the level, hasn't really been at it, or he's picked up an injury. And I, again, I've said this a few times, I've never walked out of Goodison and gone, he's a massive issue, ever, no. ever. But there's been times where you're going, he needs to do much. See, I think what it, what's happening, Nathan Patterson is, I think his best attribute to going forward. And if you look at his, his numbers from last season, he got... I think he got three assists, which was as many as Coleman and Young combined. He got from that area with, with a lot of less games. Um, but I think is because the manager is risk averse. I don't think he's as good a defender, good enough defender for Sean Dykes. So what he's tried to do is tailor his game to suit our manager instead of building on what he's very good at because Mikhailenko is a better defensive fullback than he is an offensive fullback there's no question about it he tried to be a bit better going forward but he just hasn't quite got it and don't think the manager minds that I think he likes the safety first I think with Patterson a different kind of coach who was on the front foot would have him flying up and down that side and, and get balls it's, into the it's box. It's a styles clash, isn't it? And I think yeah, in well. trying to adapt his game, he's tried to keep two plates of food yeah, hot at the same time, yeah. and they've both gone a little they bit lukewarm. They yeah. both need the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> All so, the goodness gone. Yeah, but it, it and it's difficult because he is a young player, so mm. you'd hope there is that room to adapt his game. Yeah. He's you know he's not learned that many habits as mm. much as someone like an Ashley Young, obviously, yeah, who yeah. spent a long time in his career, but. Um, the hope is that he can become a player who's effective at both ends. Because I'd never want to coach a young fullback out of being good going forwards. Mm. They just might play in a system where they don't get the opportunity to do that as mm. much. But you do have to think long term, especially with younger players, and go, he might actually end up being here longer than Sean Dice just because of his age. Mm. And you know, you obviously don't know what's going to happen with ownership and no, no. whatever. Not to say that Dice will be out the door anytime soon. I just think. Um, yeah. You know, you look at he's a young player with time on his contract, and the club mm. obviously want to give him a chance. So you don't want to, you know, completely change his game. But I do think in the short term, in this team, he needs to nail the defensive side. No, I think yeah, that, that, again, I think you're right. I can't, I couldn't sit here and go, he's the answer, definitely, because we every time you feel like he's getting somewhere, he gets injured. You know, and even that we got beat six 0 at Chelsea, and the manager brought him on, and he ends up getting a hamstring injury, which. Finishes his season and he misses the Euros because of it. Yeah. And he's not fit still. He's only now just training with the first team again. So even that, he has been almost cursed by injuries since he come in. Um, and it, his Everton career has been like that. Frank Lampard was going to play in, at West Ham in his first season. He got injured the last kick of training the day before and was out for the season. So it, it seems to have followed him uh, around, hasn't it? And it's something he's got to correct. And the reason why I'm saying the 10 game thing is because if he got to the end of the 10 games and you were like, it's not the answer, then at least you can make a decision on him and go, right, look, look, look we're going to sell you or we're going to look. Yeah. Um, what else? There is a couple of weeks to go for the window. So if Everton could bring in some money for the likes of Mopai and Michael Keane and Mason Holgate, who were all out of contract, and who knows? Dominic Calvert Lewin, we, we still don't know what's going to happen with him yet because he's also out of contract. What would you hope if, if Everton could bring two players in before the end of this window? What would you hope in the you know what positions and why? Assuming that, um, let's say for argument, say Dom signs a contract yeah. and the striker, so you're not looking at buying a striker. Yeah, I think you need to address the fullback positions. Okay. I think 
I know I've just spoke a lot about giving Patterson a chance, but mm. I would like a right back. Really? To be honest. Okay. And you know, maybe you look at or alternatively you look at a left back cheaper one, one who you know isn't necessarily as good as Michalenko, but is a different style of full back and gives yeah. us that option to switch. Yeah. You know, even Michalenko in a back three or just switch left backs and have someone who can overlap more. Mm. And because then that allows you to change your wingers as well. It just gives course, you yeah. a little bit more tactical depth and I think we are a little bit light in the middle as well. I know, Midfield. yeah, I know we've got bodies in there, and I know Tim's done well in preseason, and um, Garner Gay is one of our best players. Mm. James Garner has his moments. I'm not his biggest fan, but he mm. has his moments, mm. obviously. And Decore is obviously effective in that more advanced role in terms of getting us goals, but. I do think people will slightly underestimate how much we'll miss Onana. Of course, people can look to the records that we got more wins without him mm. in the team, but he had a lot of good performances in games that we drew as well, and yeah. games that we certainly didn't lose because of him. Mm. Somewhere he obviously could have done a lot mm. more as well, but um, yeah, I think we just look a little bit weak there, and we have had bodies go out. Andre Gomez as well, stylistically, wasn't suited for this team, but he was a body that we relied on at he times. Was, He's yeah. gone as well so i think for depth options and for giving us a little bit more ability on the ball because at the moment there's not really one of our midfielders our established midfield three that were already here of garner to Corey and garner gay mm. who are massively advanced on the ball yeah. tim's showing promise mm. obviously as well but i think you want an established player in the middle who can get his foot on the ball a little bit more still suit what we're trying to do in the middle still be a runner first and foremost still be able to get stuck in first and foremost but someone you can you know you can turn if it um you know give us someone to shout that at then our last season of Cuddleston <laughs> because um we'll i'm sure we'll be missing that but no we um, someone with just a little bit more ability on the ball in the middle of the park i think would go a long way fair enough fair enough but not calvin phillip then no no, sorry, no. just to add a caveat, um, not someone who's on absolutely massive wages yeah, and it costs a fortune to buy or yeah. even just to loan in. No, interest. I, I personally want a, a quick wide player. Mm. I think we've got nice footballers, as in in and die in Linston, we can probably do a job out there, but I, I want someone with pace. Um, however that looks, whether that's a loan or a permanent, I don't know, we'll see. Go on then, where, do, where are you? You know, I want to push you, it's that time. There's obviously no right and wrong answer, but where do you think Everton will finish up this season? Well, according to Alan Shearer, we're going to finish 17th. Okay. But he's an idiot. And of I'm course not, he's so, an idiot. Yeah. Clueless. Uh, I'm going to say 12th. I think oh. there's teams with bigger squads who have spent bigger mm. around mid-table who might push into... Because the race for Europe's going to be hot and you're going to mm. have teams who've been looking for Europe finishing around 10th, potentially. Yeah, and I don't yeah. think... I'm quite there yet, but I think no. you know what on the cusp of um, the top half, out of trouble, no drama, mm. putting results together, being strong at home, cool. that for me is fine. Interesting. Interesting. I think between eleventh and fourteenth, I think they'll be in that bracket, whichever whichever thing that is. But we'll see. We could be massively wrong. Everton could win the league. Who knows? Or they could get relegated. You never know. You never know, but I, I honestly think we'll be in that. I mean, the 48 points you got last season, put, we were there. We were 11th yeah. or whatever it was, so I think we'll be similar to that. Let us know what you think in the uh, comments section below. What are you looking forward to seeing from Everton this season? What did they need to do better? How many players do we need before the window shuts? Don't say 11. And where do you think Everton will finish in the league table? Big thanks to Jack. We'll see you later.